conscious consumerism, minimising or reducing toxic exposure, withdrawing consent is a really critical one. You know, in terms of just going, you know what, I'm not going to have that hormone meat. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to have those personal care products with crap in them, etc., etc. Upon saying that, though, greenwashing is a really interesting one, which you probably all know about, and particularly in the personal care field, a massive amounts. You know, things like um, I'll go through this a little bit later. But things such as what, what's actually on a label is a little bit dubious these days. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Creating healthy spaces, food, personal care, textiles, toys, building and furnishing, renovating is a really critical one. Pest control, plastics and cleaning. They're the kind of main areas, I would say. I'm going to tell you a really critical one around being a label detective. The best thing that you can do, I don't know if it's got it here. Narelle, who produces My Essence, actually did this slide. And it's a great one because most people will say to me, I'm not a chemist, I'm not a chemist, how am I meant to understand these chemicals? As a rule of thumb, in which she taught me, she says, a rule of thumb, if you can't pronounce it, <laughs> if you can't pronounce the chemical or the ingredient, don't buy it, it's synthetic. Like if you can't, like so many of those, I can't even pronounce, for example. As a general rule of thumb in terms of most of the product, the main component of the product is in the first three or four ingredients. So even if you just want to look at those first three or four ingredients and have a look at them, um, that's the bulk of the product in terms of how we actually break down a chemical kind of composition. I'm going to go through as well. This is a really critical one. The MSDS, anyone who wants to get a bit more cluey about having a, a toxic or chemical free environment, MSDS, the material safety data sheet, it's available for any chemical. MSDS, so you could put in PEG50 almond glycerides or sodium fluoride sulfate MSDS on Google or whatever search engine you use. And you'll be able to find out what's actually in that, that material safety data sheet. Some will have a lot, some will have no data you know, contained. And it means that there's been no testing on it. Some will say it's a neurotoxin, some will say it's carcinogenic, some will actually say um, it's an endocrine disruptor, etc., etc. This is one product that we just got off the shelf. It's, it's the most common brand in Australia. Um, and it's pretty much the same products for shampoo or body wash for both kids. But this is what we found just by going onto the MSDSs. And this is available on our shelves in our supermarkets, for example. There's endocrine disruptions, carcinogenics um, materials in there. There's irritants in there, toxic to kidney you know, ingredients in there. And that's just, anyone can do this to any product. You know, so really, you know, it's just such a, a useful tool in terms of, M, you know, any chemical MSDS. In terms of, I'm just going to move on to, you know, because I know I've got a really short period of time left. In terms of nutrition, in terms of what we see in our clinics and so forth, in terms of optimal depression, particularly with kids and mums, some of the critical ones we see is maternal iron deficiency, which is a really critical one to kind of watch out for in terms of how we do nutrition. Um, and you can get those both with meat sources, um, in particular red meat sources, but also with some of the really good greens as well, the spirulinas, the chlorellas, the wheat grasses and so forth. Vitamin D deficiency is so significant. You know, these days with children, we use that much carcinogenic sunscreens on our children and then we put them out in the sun, which is just toxic anyway. And then, but you know, really they need to have a good dose of sun, a good dose of good sunlight. Not necessarily in the middle of the day, but a good 20 minutes of just sun running around. Because we're seeing a lot of um, vitamin D deficiency. Zinc deficiency, we're seeing that in terms of Caesar rates. So we've got these bubbers that have got really kind of depleted guts, you know, because they're actually not getting um, you know, as babies come into the world, they get some really good gut bugs, you know, through the vaginal cavity. So we're seeing these babies seize it out and they're not given breast milk. So how that bubbers get good guts initially is one, through that vaginal cavity, which most of them aren't coming out of these days, and two, through breast milk. And so many women aren't breastfeeding these days. So we've got these um, bubbers who just aren't getting what they actually need in the world. So, and that's as a result of interventions in pregnancy and interventions you know, in terms of how we're feeding our babies as well. Higher antibiotic use, um, hygiene, that whole, you know, as I said before, antibacterial. So we're developing babies, like babies really need to play in good dirt and good soil. 
they need to actually develop some of those really good gut bugs and so forth. So getting them back out there is really critical. Increased chemical exposure and chronic stress. We see more kids, in particular toddlers and so forth, more containerised than any other time in history. They're always pushed somewhere, supervised activity, etc. And it's usually not in a good nature, for example. I would say this is probably some of the most optimal nutrition. Breast milk, nutritional adequacy, you know, really doing that preventative health stuff, like really doing those good green smoothies in the mornings for mamas. You know, um, when I'm working with mums, yes, there's a place for vitamins and minerals, but I think the main thing is actually good whole foods, the, the good um, probiotics, the good um, superfoods, in particular for mums during pregnancy, a good green smoothie. I got very sick in pregnancy, so the thought of greens was very hard to consume in pregnancy, but actually doing some workarounds and getting some good, you know, and green smoothies are really good ones because you can also produce some sweet ones in that sort of sense with pregnancy. Whole foods, unprocessed organic diets, low to no sugar, particularly for mums in pregnancy. Um, play in the dirt, particularly with children. Adequate sleep and relaxation. As I said before, kids are more supervised than any other time in history. You know, they're just, they're brought to playgrounds, they're supervised, they're brought, to, they're, they're often not outside. We've got a generation that are inside, for example. Sunlight, appropriate, so good guts. They do, do one of the best things I, I talk to mums about is getting that good bacteria back into kids' bodies. You know, they already have got all these chemicals inside of them, so getting some good bacteria back into their guts. Fermented foods are absolutely fantastic. Um, when I went around the world recently, most cultures have got so many fermented, good fermented foods. We don't do fermented foods very well, so getting some good, you know, fermented foods. The kimchi, the, um, you know, and liven's a really good one that my husband's got. Just some really good um, fermented foods, for example. Omega-3s and preventing anemia. The biggest thing around children, particularly toddlers, is iron deficiency. So being really on the ball in terms of how we can actually address that in terms of greens. The other thing just to finish up is this idea of conscious parenting. You know, so often we're looking for experts. So we're, we're I'll just give one minute, yeah. So we're looking for experts to tell us how to parent. And I just try and remind parents, it comes naturally, you have everything you need. You know, um, you know your children better than anyone else. Um, and we existed for thousands of years without these kind of experts, including myself. Like most of the time parents will say, what do I need? And I'm kind of like, what do you think? What do you think your children? And most of the time, most parents have the answer. They just might need where to find it, for example. But most of the time, they actually do know. We make it very complicated. Trust your baby. Critical one, trust your baby. You know, kids will tell you when they're sick. Kids will tell you when they're hungry. Kids will tell you when they need something. They will cry, they will ask for it, they will, you know, whatever. Trust your baby, you know, follow their lead. You know, in lots of ways, don't follow us, follow our children because they are completely the expert. My children, for example, eat green straight out of the, the jar. Some days they'll have lots, some days they won't have any, some days they'll just have a teaspoon. It's completely determined by what they actually need because they're in tune with their body. We're not. You know, just really trusting their bodies about what they need. Um, and they have, you know, there's this idea of spoiling children. I really hate that idea and I always just say, children and babies have no bad intentions, like none. So really get peaceful with them. You know, they're always just telling us what they need. The other thing is protective legislation. We need legislation. We don't have it here in Australia. So if there's elections or you're speaking to a you know, part, member of parliament, talk to them about protective legislation around it. We don't have any for children in Australia at the moment at all. There's this great term, nature deficit disorder. I love it because we've got a generation of, I think, nature deficit disordered children. You know, they aren't connected to nature. And when kids and, and, and parents are connected to nature, all of that conscious parenting, all of that um, connectedness to our hearts and, and, you know, them is much easier. And yet we have children that just really aren't connected to nature. Let them get dirty. Let them become free-range children, I say. So this is my last quote. I love it. What we do to Mother Earth, we do directly to ourselves. It's that ecosystem inside, which is absolutely critical. These are my two chicks. I'm going to end with this quote. The health and well-being of our children and babies is a critical measure of society for two reasons. 
In moral terms, how well a society cares for its weak and vulnerable is a measure of how civilised it is. In more pragmatic terms, a society that fails to cherish its youth fails. It's as simple as that. And I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for coming. Hope I mean, I had to jam a lot in. <laughs> um,